Welcome everyone to Machlok It Matters, How to Disagree Constructively. Tonight we're going to do some tech study about some of the core guidelines that were in the ancient Sanhedrin, the court or parliament some 2,000 years ago that encouraged healthy disagreement. But then we're going to take those guidelines and we're going to create a mock Sanhedrin and engage in what's called a constructive controversy exercise. We're going to just do a couple of sources in Chavruta. So just learn with the person sitting next to you. Think about what is the guideline here about? What are they actually trying to encourage by having these procedures? The Sanhedrin was organized like half of a round granary so that each judge could see each judge. If everybody can see everybody all the time, I think that really means they have to be sincere. What was the significance of everyone sitting in that circle? There's a vulnerability to seeing someone's whole body, that you have nothing to hide. Oh, an element of equality. So everybody comes to the same place at the same time. We're not on different levels of platforms, heights, etc. It sends a message that we believe that the truth is in the middle of the room. It's not with the instructor, it's in the text, and it's in the conversation. So the first guideline is, if you want to have a serious learning conversation, make sure to sit in a matter that everyone can hear, see, and learn from each other. Capital cases begin from the judges on the side. So who are the judges on the side? So who, who talks first? The youngest. The youngest. <laughs> Says the youngest. <laughs> the youngest, why? So as not to be intimidated by those who are older and wiser. <laughs> to not be intimidated. Which meant that they were not forced to present something that would get them into trouble. Value and so the second guideline is that the order of speaking should be designed to ensure that all voices are heard and prevent anyone from being intimidated about expressing their honest opinion. Rav Kahana said, if the Sanhedrin unanimously find the accused guilty, he is acquitted. Well, it seems like it stems from the, like this deep discomfort with capital punishment and the death penalty. If it's unanimous, it may be fixed, and the guy should, everybody has some degree of scorth merit. Yeah. If, there, if there's absolute moral clarity on an issue that's of life and death, something's going wrong. If everyone immediately raises their hand and says he's guilty, and nobody can see another angle on this, we're gonna acquit him. Not necessarily because we think he's totally innocent, it's just because we are not sure if we're stuck in what's called group think. So the third guideline for encouraging healthy disagreement in the Sanhedrin was to make sure you are not surrounded by only those who agree with you. Rav Yehuda said in Rav's name, none is to be given a seat on the Sanhedrin unless he is able to prove the cleanness of a reptile from biblical texts. Uh, Sheretz is, is, a, is like a catchphrase for anything that is it's completely impure. How could it possibly make be... be... So it means you need to be able to argue a case from all sides. The rabbis of the Sanhedrin had to know how to argue every single line, 49 ways one way, 49 ways another way. It even says that children were educated to know how to read their text, every line to read it 49 ways one way, 49 ways another way, with the thinking that if children grow up with that type of education, you'll have members of the Sanhedrin one day, leaders of our generation, know how to think out of the box and argue both sides. The fourth guideline to encourage disagreement in the Sanhedrin was to make sure each member really knew how to argue both sides on an issue before voting. But now let's take those values and we're gonna put them into practice. So we are now longer just a uh, classroom. Now we are a mock Sanhedrin and we have a dilemma that has come uh, to our attention and we are actually going to have to rule on what to do in this dilemma. The speaking event set to take place next week within the orchard has already been advertised on Facebook. Numerous orchard alumni have written comments and sent emails asking that the talk be canceled there is no institutional policy or precedent for how to proceed in such situations. The president of Orchard has therefore decided to gather you, representatives of the board and student body, including some who have signed the petition and some who have not, or not yet, to engage in a constructive controversy exercise in order to come up with your proposal for how best to proceed in this tense and divisive situation. We're gonna be two groups. You will be 
one group, one Beit Midrash, you will be the other Beit Midrash. One Chavruta is going to pick to say, keep him, keep the talk, don't cancel it. The other is going to pick the other side of saying, cancel it. Perhaps talk about these issues in a constructive way. Yeah. Without legitimizing him. him. We need moral clarity and that this is a clear issue. Uh, free expression ends at hate speech. I was happy to engage in, in the process. The process I found fascinating. I came in uh, with the opinion to cancel, but I very much heard the other side and felt myself start to sway. Um, I did come back around, but I felt myself in a position that I did not expect to be in, and I appreciate that. The experience was terrific. When I read the, uh, the scenario, I was on the fence, um, and the process of having to argue both sides it made me feel very comfortable in the idea of continuing to invite the speaker. Um, that the, the there are checks that exist for a reason, and when they're removed, very dangerous things happen in society, um, and it opens a road for hate that I don't think we as a Jewish institution can support. Um, I enjoyed the process a lot. I found the experience fascinating, and it was very, very, very hard to argue both sides. It was a wonderful experience. The moment we put that wall up and say, uh, what you've said and what you've done is too, too harsh, too, too much, I don't want to engage, uh, both sides are now cut off from each other and that the dialogue that should be happening or could be happening um, isn't. Um, and so that is my, my vote to invite. Uh, and I found this process really fun. I, I was like very excited and had a lot of fun doing this. I found the experience to be really interesting. I, I actually was asked because we talked earlier about the youngest person making <laughs> voting first. So to me, reflecting on that and thinking about the idea of having to speak first um, was, was an interesting idea that I'm, I'm going to have to think about further. But I'm, I'm really glad that this brought, brought that up. I think the experience was excellent. I greatly respect all the points of view made. And if you allow for differences of location, circumstances, and so on, it could not have been better. This is actually just the beginning of a much larger conversation. This is the first group that has gone through this dilemma, this case study. It started right here in our Beit Midrash. And our goal is that campuses, synagogues, schools around the country are going to go through a very similar dilemma. And they're going to be submitting what their proposal, what their vote is, and hopefully from that process of really looking at each other, making sure we're not in a room where we're just with people that agree with us, hopefully through that we'll be able to really strengthen our culture, our Jewish culture, our democratic culture of constructive disagreement and machloket. So thank you so much. You guys have been amazing. Round of applause. And I look forward to sharing with you what the actual results will be.